Well, hello now. Uh, welcome back to the channel. And uh, as I'm showing you right here, um, yes, I'm looking at the Neotech NH395, or clone, basically, 895, 395 Husqvarna clone. So, anyways, uh, why? Um, well, I don't know. Why not, right? Let's get into um, what it is. And just in case you haven't... Uh, you missed my big old smiley mug. Hello, everybody. Anyways, back to the, back to the, the bench here. So anyways, um, so I, I basically put it on the bench. Nothing else was wrong with it. Um, I, I had to fix a, uh, a bolt uh, broke down here in the bottom where the dog goes down there. So I might as well put a timing wheel on it, see what the numbers are, and see what you do. So... It, uh, for further note, let's get into it um, for what I have here. Um, we have the squish is sitting at a rather large, even though I had good good compression pulling it over his thumps nicely, right? Sitting at a large uh, 55 thousandths, so um, a large uh, squish. So now it has me contemplating I'm this far down. It's clean, right? Um, why? Because I rarely get to work on clean saws unless I clean them myself, right? So uh, why not maybe just pull this off and pull the base? Looking at it, um, there's your exhaust. It looks rather nice in there, right? And so um, let's see, I get that. The piston looks good. Uh, the ports actually don't look bad as far as like chamfering goes, that kind of thing. Um, we have the exhaust sitting at 99. Um, we have the transfers at 118, and then the intake is at 75, right? So um, that's kind of where we're at is, is with all this. And you can kind of see uh, in here um, where it is uh, down in, eh, whatever, it's there. But uh, so that's where we're at. I think everybody realizes uh, the aftermarket carbs. Uh, it's the Hylic right there. Um, and uh, the only other thing that was kind of interesting is when you get in here and I put this ring in here, this ring uh, doesn't sit in here very well. Kind of like um, um, uh, 372s and the 390s and that kind of stuff. So when I get it in here and, and uh, put it uh, where it should go, it um, shows like it, it sucks in. E even though it did not appear to have an air leak, it, the top of this kind of sucks in a little bit um, where it's at up in here, the top. So, um, yeah, it, it kind of pooches in like so um, where it was at in there, and hopefully you can kind of see that. Uh, I can't, not focusing very well. But anyways, it gave, it gave me kind of uh, some moments of pause so anyways um you know with this uh i'm this far kind of contemplating what to do on the next um so should i pull the cylinder and pull the base gasket and do a base gasket delete on here um probably that's where i'm going uh just to give it a little bump uh, of course you know i don't have a lathe set up so i'm not cutting the base um, but maybe a little bump in what it is and um and then we'll maybe try to go from there so um yeah let me know what you think uh go ahead maybe i'll i'll go ahead and and uh, do the exhaust as well it looked like the plate wasn't quite matched up and what we have is when we get it in there in, um where it should be there's a little bit more lip over here that can be taken out as we can kind of see that dark line from just the initial run. So I could widen it just a little bit on the exhaust. Don't know if I, how much I'm gonna change the numbers. I mean, the base gasket delete on this thing will probably only change the numbers um, by a degree, which would put it closer to 100 for the exhaust. Uh, the base gasket down in there doesn't look very thick. So it looks kind of like a paper gasket. So. You know, we'll see what happens. Um, anyways, hope you enjoy it, and we'll catch you guys later.